Hey everybody. So today I'm out here again at this log uh, of this tree that I thought was red oak. I think these might be some of the leaves from it. Obviously they're not coming out of that. They're growing up next to it. But what I do know is this is not red oak. This uh, wood weighs, it feels like it weighs twice as much as red oak does even wet it's extremely pretty uh, and it's a hardwood and the best i can tell is this is pig nut uh hickory pig nut hickory or what they call smooth bark hickory and it looks like hickory wood but what i'm used to is the shag bark hickory which i've got a bunch of on this property uh so that's what i'm going with is pig nut hickory which is also called smooth bark hickory Sure thought it was red oak. <laughs> it didn't take long to figure out that it wasn't. Well, we're gonna cut an eight foot piece of this uh, just because the 10 foot ones weigh an awful lot. Here is a wall that we started with this uh, pig nut hickory. And like I said, it looks really nice. Uh, but I need some more logs to finish up or more boards to finish up this bathroom. And then we might start in the upstairs, but I'm gonna switch as soon as I have enough to finish this small bathroom, the guest bath or whatever, main house bathroom. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to red oak, which I know I've got another big piece of or two out there. So we really like the way it looks, but it's way harder to work with than the red oaks. All right, so, uh, well, the morning just got kind of exciting. I uh, had this camera stuck to this tractor on this magnetic base that I use, and I was scraping this dirt away to clear out all the brush from this log I'm getting ready to cut. And I reached down to grab my camera, and it wasn't there. So just spent about the last 35, 40 minutes looking for my camera, worrying that I'd ran over it and pushed it down into this mud <laughs> with the tractor. Turns out it actually just fell off and was wedged in here with these hoses. So got lucky there. And of course, Maggie's been yelling at me about the uh, safety cables that she bought me probably six months ago that I have yet to use. But I normally, I don't drive around a whole lot with the camera on stuff. So, oh well, probably gonna have to use them now. <laughs> but I'm gonna mark this log at eight feet, cut it and get it on the mill.
All righty, something else I'm going to do today uh, that, like I said, I've got 31 hours, 31.1 hours on this mill, and it's getting ready to be winter, and I've been covering it with that tarp, and that's been working pretty well. I bought that tarp at Harbor Freight for like 10 bucks. Uh, anyway, this scale that looks pretty dang neat, I have never been able to figure out using it for anything basically and i haven't put a lot of effort in it because frankly what i'm doing doesn't need any precise measurements that would work with that i just if i need a precise measurement i mark it on the cant and put the blade against it and cut it uh the other thing is my production runs of these eight inch siding boards that i'm making uh they come out perfect at three complete revolutions of that crank which comes out at seven eighths so I'm going to take this off because right here it's not too bad. But when this mill is up, which a lot of times it is when I cover it with a tarp, that tarp is starting to get cut by this edge. So, like I said, there's probably a lot of other ways around it, but I'm just going to take this off and store it in case I ever decide to want to mess with it again. I think, honestly, if I was going to try and come up with a way to make precise measurements, I probably would just mess with the uh, laser thing that I see everybody doing. So I'm going to take that off and set it aside. Probably put the magnet on the other door. <laughs> These are cool magnets. I just don't have really much use for it. All right, and ta-da, just like that. 10 millimeter wrench and the scale will be stored. And that tarp will go over this mill much cleaner and not cut anything. One of the goals today, uh, it's supposed to be below freezing at night, starting tonight. So I'm gonna run all this water out of here and replace it with some windshield washer fluid. Okay, so something else that I found that's kind of cool is these magnetic bowls. Uh, you know, working with this mill, there's all the time, there are small uh, parts, small metal parts, washers, screws and stuff that you're messing with and so i'm just going to leave this bowl stuck to the side and then if i go to work on something like i just did taking those bolts off to hold that scale i can put it here and throw the parts in it and not lose them down here in the millings and sawdust so i think i'll just let that ride there okay we're getting close to milling really we are <laughs> okay next thing we'll do is check the oil i can reach it Perfect. Never like to run anything without making sure there's oil in it. It seems like an easy way to prevent problems. Okay, so I thought I'd show kind of my decision making process on putting these logs on the mill when they have these blurbs. So this is the top of the cant or log, I guess at this point. And uh, I've checked it for metal. Anyway, it has kind of a wide spot there where the uh, probably a big limb came off maybe anyway so this end is pretty round and straight except for those two limbs defects that came out and then there's one on top so what I want to do is I'm gonna put these two on top first to slice them off the other thing I'm gonna do is normally I put the small end, the top, against the saw head. But what I'm going to do today is spin this around because I don't want this blurb there to throw this cant off at too big an angle and end up losing a bunch of it at the other end. So even though that's the top on this particular piece of tree, the smaller, straighter end is this end. So I'm going to start cutting from it. The other thing is, the way this will sit at just over 8 feet is... That blurb will be here kind of in free air where it won't throw the thing off. The first six inches of this, uh, when I put it on the mill, will be sitting on that bunk. And if I put something that had a big blurb on it there, it's going to throw the whole thing off down. So I'm just going to spin this around and put it on the mill with these two limb nods up. 
then the first turn will get rid of that one and it should end up producing a pretty straight cant and again this is pig nut hickory comes out really pretty <laughs> something else I'll show you I tighten the blade with this one inch socket and this 3 8 drive torque wrench and it's an old school type with the I think it's called a vernier caliper uh, measurements so I know they use this on like micrometers also so the line there that has the 20 that's what you want to go to and you spin this dial which you have to pull this back on this particular one this is a cobalt they sell them at Lowe's it was their store brand for a while I don't know if it still is but anyway pull that back and then turn this until this sleeve lines up with that 20 mark at zero so there's 20 foot pounds oops I don't know if I saw that there's 20 foot pounds of torque and that's what I tighten the blade to. Okay, when it clicks, that's 20 foot back. And it's still pretty much where that lines up to. There goes Maggie. <laughs> no, no, I just said there goes Maggie. See ya. One of the other things that I absolutely, well, we absolutely love about living here is uh, we use our ATVs for cars at least half the time. <laughs> so how can you hate that? Win-win. <laughs> Uh, okay, so something else that I've done is I bought these gloves at Rule King the other day, but they are uh, vibration padded gloves. So running chainsaws and running this mill, you get a lot of vibrations to your hands, which aren't great for you. And uh, this just kind of soaks up some of that vibration versus the regular work gloves. I had a really nice pair of Echo uh, gloves. They're still around here somewhere but I don't know where they're at. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's mill this log up.
so I'm cutting more of this uh, smooth bark hickory or pig nut hickory. And what I've got is I cut this log into two cans. So I'm doing uh, one by eight, basically. They're actually seven eighths by eight and a quarter. And then I'm doing uh, the other board there is just over five inches. And we'll make some trim with those and then also finish up some of the bathroom walls. But this big nut hickory, man, it's cutting good. And it's beautiful wood. Okay, so you can see I've kind of gotten to the center of this pig nut hickory or smooth hickory and the very center is starting to go uh, hollow. So what I'm going to do, because I've got a little bit of wane on that one, try to get up at least two, inch and a, two inches, maybe two and a quarter, but on this other one, I've got very little wane on it. So what I'm going to do is flip these over because I want to get as many 1x8s, basically they're 7x8s by 8, but still, uh, as many boards as I can out of them. So I'm going to put the, the core down. The other thing is they talk about you don't really want the center. You can see it right there. Center it log. So I'm going to flip them over, put that at the bottom, and then start shaving off what will be the top, the bottom, to get more boards out of that and I'm going to just whittle it away I think I've gotten down to like an inch and a half from the bunks before but it's kind of a pain because you have to move this guard to do it uh, but what I think I'm going to do is just flip these over and then just cut them down as low as I can get them maximize the number of boards out and then uh, if I can do anything with that centerpiece I will if not I won't worry about it
here are all of the one by eights that I milled. Uh, that one's gonna be a little small, it still has bark on it, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of those boards. So not too bad. We'll get them clamped down and tomorrow we'll run anything we need to through the saw, run the others through the planer. Actually, everything goes through the planer on one side. Get them cut and put on our walls. So here's another little stash of wood I got out in the woods. And this is a pile of red oak. There's about four nice pieces here. So we're going to use them up. Okay, we got a nice little fire going today. Uh, safety tip, if you're sweeping up your floor and you got a bunch of sawdust, don't throw it on a open fire. It will kind of be a dust explosion. Ask me how I know. <laughs> anyway, it was kind of exciting. Today, what we're gonna do is, uh, I've got four of these logs. Uh, they're the top out of a, a, a red oak tree that was right behind our lean-to and we had that cut down because it was uh honestly it was pretty much endangering our building so uh what i'm going to do this log is much smaller hang on I'll get a cape okay so this log this is the big end of it is it's only like 13 and a half well 14 we'll call it 14. so what i wanted to do was today was try out my uh steel cant hook and see if it works any better on these uh, 14 inch logs than it did on those 22 and 24 inch logs so uh like i said when once the cant gets down you can use about anything but i've been using my pv the whole time i've had this mill and uh i do have a couple cant hooks also and i thought i'd try them out today with a smaller piece of log hope you liked the video enjoy <laughs>
Hey, everybody. As we finish up this cant and uh, finish up these boards on this red oak log, we sure appreciate you watching. We hope you like, subscribe, and we love your comments. Have a good one, y'all. We love this sawmill, and we love our Copper Barn homestead. See ya! Thank you.